Welcome everyone, I'm Jeff St. Laurent, Tuesday call. Gonna rock and roll, get some good information as usual. I, I do record the calls as always, so if you haven't been there already, sellingcoaching.com, that's my website. If you go to the university, that is where I keep all of the recordings. You can just go scroll down a little bit to the left. There's the categories. You can check, click on the Tuesday calls. And I think we're up to like 33 of them or so. So we got plenty of information for you. Racking it up with uh, number 34 today. So I'll be posting this by the end of the week. Um, and I always announce it. Um, and if you're in my private Facebook group or on my email list, um, I always post it in there. So you guys are aware of it as well. Uh, if you aren't on my, um, in my private Facebook group. It's a great opportunity for us to interact on a different level as well. Um, on my website, sellingcoaching.com, right at the very top on the navigation bar, on any page, it says join my private Facebook group. So if you want to find that, you can always go there as well. And a great group of coaches in there. We actually just passed 600 uh, this weekend, which is exciting. You know, growing at one person at a time. And it's always good when I get uh, new people, you know, from the group on the call here, or when, we, uh, when I see new people participating in comments, et cetera, because um, I like to get to know people. I like to uh, keep engaged with people. And that's what I always teach about uh, with you and your business is, you know, the name of the game is building your audience and then it's engaging with your audience. And that's pretty much what you do. And from that, you know, that's where you can find your clients when people are ready to, you know, work with you and when the timing is right and the need is there. So definitely consider uh, checking out that private Facebook group. Like I said, sellingcoaching.com right at the top. You'll click a button and it'll take you right over there. Request to join and I'll approve you. And that will get you going. So we can interact a little bit more. And of course, last before I begin some good content tonight, today, um, uh, if you're really serious about moving forward with your coaching business, um, I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, and I also have a, a group mentoring program as well. So if you're just like, ah, I know I need some guidance and you're in that spot, um, just send me an email. Again, like I said, go to my website, uh, click on the contact page or the work with me page, fill out the form, send it to me and let's interact. I'm not going to try and like just sign you up. And um, I just, I want to find, if you're in that place where you really want some guidance, let's talk and maybe I can answer just a few questions or maybe it turns out to more, but I'm really uh, eager to help people. Again, my passion is helping coaches transition to a full-time business. That's what I do. And I really focus on the selling and, and the marketing aspect of it because after doing it full-time since 2004, uh, I've realized you know, the number one thing that's really allowed my continued success. And that's a key thing is continued success is understanding the sales and the marketing aspects. And, um, and that's what I want to be able to teach you that. And that's why on my calls and everything I teach, I kind of relate the different topics back to, to sales because uh, it's also a word <laughs> that people are, are pretty afraid of uh, unless they have some experience with it. And, and sometimes a lot of experience with it isn't the right experience because most people have had a poor experience with selling. And I want to make it simple and fun because uh, it can be uh, when you approach it the right way. And so with that being said, um, Today's topic is, I'd say, the biggest mistakes to avoid in your business. And of course, I'll give you some solutions along the way. Um, but I, I really want to go into kind of some of these, these mistakes so you can start to understand you know, what not to do and obviously focus, uh, give you some ideas on what to do as a result as well. Uh, I'm a big advocate of mentoring, obviously, not just because it's what I do, but it's, it's the people I've worked along the way have helped me out tremendously. And you know, growing a business is slow as it is, and it's never as quick as we want it to be. And therefore, you know, that's why I'm a big advocate of mentoring because when every time I've worked with people, I realize I'm like, wow, if, if I didn't do that, like how long would it have taken me to figure that out? And, um, and that's even with my group mentoring program that I offer. I love that because, you know, some of the questions people ask, it's like, oh my God, thank you. You know, it's simple questions, but they get that benefit of being like, wow, I'm so glad I asked that because I was going down a completely different avenue. And so, again, that's where that experience comes in and it's so, so vital. So let me go into some of these, um, these mistakes so you can start to understand these and I'll even walk away with some solutions as well. And as I was, I was doing this, I just started brainstorming and I was just writing a bunch down. And there's a lot of them, but I want to kind of give you some of the key ones uh, to keep the content you know, focused and rich for you. So one of the, th the first things that a mistake people will make is, you know, they're coming right out of the gate, you know, into their coaching business and they want to 
design, like they want to do a website, they want to get business cards, they want to do the logo, and they're focusing on like, you know, domain name and things like that. And, and while, of course, all that stuff's important to a certain degree, um, right out of the gate, the things that I've learned along the way is, is that, you know, when you're starting off, let's, let's think about one thing. Let's assume you've identified your target market. People call it a niche, you know, one message for one audience. It's, and we went over this on, on last call, um, you know, speaking your message as a coach. And that's, again, that's in the university under sellingcoaching.com, um, the last call. But let's assume for a moment you've already figured that out, meaning you figured out who you want to help with what specifically. And that's how I like to say it. Like I help coaches with what specifically transition to a full-time business, right? So you help who with what specifically. Let's say you figured that out. So even if you figure that out, most coaches make the mistake in going right away and okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the website, I'm gonna get my business cards, I'm gonna do a logo. And, and, and I would advise you to hold off on that a little bit uh, because once you get into your market and start doing some things, you're gonna learn uh, more about first, what your market really wants, uh, what they need, where their biggest challenges are, where they gravitate to the most, uh, things like that, you know, um, what questions they have. And it's going to kind of really start to direct you. And, and I've found is along that path, you start to understand and get more clarity on your message. You know, even when I started off with uh, selling coaching, you know, I had been, I'd been coaching at, at that point for like 11 years. You know, I had a full-time business in coaching, but I, and I transitioned into uh, helping coaches transition to full-time because some work I had done with coaches and I just had felt this calling like to give back and really work with them because I really wanted to help them succeed. And so I transitioned into that. But even when I transitioned into that, I knew a lot of the things that I could assist them with and I thought I knew what they needed. And of course, I, I did know what they needed, but I didn't know until I started interacting with them on a deeper level and working with them more one-on-one -on -one and in groups where they, you know, within all those topics that I thought they needed, which ones were the heaviest hitting ones? Which ones were the really the most relevant for them? And, and that's where I started really realizing, I'm like, wow, I, can, I really need to start focusing on this, this, and this a little bit harder. Or even with the selling aspect, like for instance, I realized that you know, as much as I wanted to help people with the conversion of, let's say, the leads and actually to getting clients, and I definitely helped them with that, but they weren't getting leads. They didn't know how to get themselves out there. They didn't have the confidence to get out there. Um, if you've been in my Facebook group, that led me to designing, uh, beginning of 2016, I designed the uh, visibility challenge because I'm like, they have trouble promoting themselves. They can't even get themselves in front of a video camera and feel comfortable talking about something. So I'm like, I need to help them, you know, become more visible, become comfortable seeing their voice, or seeing their face, hearing their voice, uh, speaking clarity on, uh, they're getting their language out around what they do. You know, the first, let's say, few minutes of the call, you heard me talk about what I do, right? And tell me who I help, why I help them, things like that, where you can find my information, how you can work with me, right? It's not an in-your-face promotion, but I, I'm letting people know, you know, so they understand more of, of where they can access my information, how they can find me, how they can be, become a part of what I'm doing, things like that. And I can articulate that well because I've found it and I've worked on that craft. So in other words, like, that's where I realized like, they need to work on those fundamentals. So now let's rewind back to you and realize that you know, if, you're, if you're investing time, energy, money, especially into you know, business cards, logo, web design, things like that, what I found is, is you know, three, six, eight months in, even a year in, that stuff might start to change. And I can't tell you how many times or, or how many thousands of business cards I've thrown in the trash. You know, I, even my selling coaching website, when I launched that, I invested with a company and I invested $3,000 on in my website and what was it in, like probably four months in, after really learning the market and stuff like that, I, I completely redid my website, logo, colors, images, everything, because just what I thought the direction I was going in, um, just it wasn't the right direction and it wasn't what I really wanted to portray, even, to, even down in terms of the images of myself, you know, and how that reflected from people's feedback and stuff. And so why I'm bringing this up as a mistake is I'd say, you know, instead of just jumping in with the website and logo and stuff like that, or even a name, just, just use your name to start off. 
you know, uh, you could use your initials. Like I started off in 2003, 2004 with JSL coaching, my initials, you know, and, and I was like that for, I think, four years before I transitioned to my company, True You, and then I transitioned to selling coaching. So there's that evolution along the way, and you're going to evolve. So pick a social media. So in other words, pick a social media platform would be my recommendation to start off with. Don't do a logo, don't do business cards, don't do a website. Find out, you know, if you've identified who you're helping with what specifically, what social media platform are they on? And let's just use Facebook for, as an example, right? So create a Facebook page, um, maybe create a Facebook group. And the number one thing about a website to begin with is you want to have lead capture, right? I did a call in the, in the Selling Coaching University a while back. You can search for it, um, how to launch your business with no website. And I went into saying really the whole objective of a website is lead capture. If you don't have lead capture on a website, there's really no objective to it for the most part. So you can have that feature of a lead capture on a Facebook page. You can have it off to the side. You can have it in everything that you post with a link to a free offer, for instance, where they enter the name and email. So that's why I'd say start there. It costs zero money to, open, to start a Facebook page, to start a Facebook group. Um, to start putting some information on there, making some videos, writing some blogs. Facebook page is a great blog, right? It's, it's a great blog, right? You can, you can use it to post whatever you want, but you can post your blog post there, right? You can put links to anything that you want. So start off with there, do that for two, three months. Um, and then even if you have a domain name, let's just call it sellingcoaching.com or whatever your name is, .com, you can just forward that to your Facebook page, you know, that domain. And so when people type that in, they can go right to your Facebook page. They can like it. It's another form of lead capture and things like that. So that could be a way of starting off, getting people like, for instance, in a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group, whatever social media platform you're using, you can start interacting with them. And that can be where you begin to learn your people. Um, I can't tell you how many clients I get off of uh, just simple Facebook posts and groups that I'm in. Um, and you know when people ask questions around certain topics that I can assist them with around you know the house that I'm working with, selling coaching, helping them transition to a full-time business, things like that, and I can just refer them to some simple calls just like I'm doing right now, free uh, high-value educational calls or, or materials like in my Selling Coaching University, and as a result of that, us interacting and then them hiring me and working with me. So that has nothing to do with my website, and that costs me absolutely nothing. So it's a great way to get started um, and use that platform. And then, I'm not saying never get a website or never design a logo type of thing, but now you're going to have a better idea of you know, what do you want? What do you want to call yourself? What do you want for a logo? Maybe you never even do that at all. Um, I'm not a, actually a big advocate of business cards anyways. Um, I got a video on my university, you know, type in the search button, business cards, and you'll see why I don't recommend those. Um, but that's why I'd recommend that you start off um, as opposed to investing lots of time, energy, and money. Because making a website right away, is, uh, it's time consuming. Even if you're hiring somebody, you're putting in just as much work because you've got you've to tell them what you want, right? You've got to pick the colors. You've got to figure out the design. They just do all the behind the scenes stuff. You've got to give them the content, the pictures, so forth and so on. So that's one of my fir the first biggest mistakes is, is you know, starting up with all that stuff, the website, the business cards, the logo, right out of the gates. You know, give it three, six months of consistency. Once you've got, you know, have at least, let's say, let's say 100 to 200 people in your audience, your database, maybe 500 or more, where you've been interacting with them for a while, you've gotten at least a dozen or more clients, um, you know, that you've worked with. Now you're going to start to understand what your message is because it's going to evolve, especially in that first year, even if you feel you're coming into the gates with a really strong, solid message. Um, Another tip I'll go into in terms of maybe a mistake is, you know, the mistake of thinking that it's going to be quick and it's not going to be quick. And I'd love you to prove me wrong, right? So it can happen quick for some people, but quick is also, you know, a relative term and it's a subjective term. Um, but with that being said, I want you to develop the mindset of, okay, I'm going to do this over time. I'm going to do this over a, a year or two year period of time. And that just depends on the consistency that you're putting into the business. And when I say this is going to take time, meaning transitioning to a full-time business, um, you know, don't expect to be quitting your job in three to six months. Can it happen? Can you do it? Of course you can. People have done it before, um, but don't expect it. Uh, work towards it like you want to do that, but 
have the mindset of like, hey, I'm going to do this over the next few years, and then let's create a plan. You know, when I start off with my mentoring clients, you know, one of the first things I assess is, you know, where they are in their job, where they are financially, how long, you know, they can stand their job for, you know, and starting to create a transition plan in terms of how they work with their finances, what they're responsible for, what they need, things like that. So those are some things we start off out of the gate, but I never say like, okay, even if they say, well, I want to, you know, by the end of the year, if someone came to me now and say, you know, by the end of the year, I want to do this. I'd say, okay, great. Well, let's figure out if that's possible or not. You know, just like when I did personal training and someone came to me with a fitness goal and they gave me a time frame, I never told them that they couldn't do it or not, but I said, okay, well, let's assess the situation and see how realistic that actually is, and then we can kind of go from there. Because the biggest thing about a business as an entrepreneur is you really deserve to educate your expectations, meaning that you know, if you don't really get a, a hold of uh, an understanding what you expect, you're going to be constantly disappointing yourself. When in reality is, is just by educating yourself and understanding some of you know, the realities of the business, um, you can just better tame that disappointment. That's why a lot of the things I teach in terms of you know, uh, qualifying leads and things like that and with the complimentary sessions and a lot of those, did a lot of calls on some of those things. Uh, they're all in the university. Um, but with that stuff, is a lot of it is I want to help you understand, you know, after doing it for 12 years and having, I don't even know how many complimentary sessions I've had, I actually have record of it, I could tell you. But <laughs> the point is, is that um, I, I want to help educate your expectations So because I just kept getting disappointed. I kept having false expectations and I, I wound up on the other end disappointed. And that's hard to get over. You know, when you show up at your office, especially at home, when no one's holding you accountable and you can pretty much do whatever you want to, um, it, it's hard when you're not in the zone or you're disappointed. It, it's hard to stay focused and keep moving forward. And so that's really where is, is taking the time, planning it out, and then I'll go into it and in saying uh, a mistake people could make is not having a financial plan. And, and what I mean by a fan, financial plan is, is, is recognizing this comes from entrepreneurship. And those of you that experienced entrepreneurship understand that it's, it's not like a job in the sense of how we get paid. You know, when you're in a job, you get paid whatever your pay cycle is, twice a month, once a month, whatever it is. And, and when you get paid, you get paid typically the same amount. You know, if you have commissions or bonuses, you understand there's some flexibility in it, but also typically there's some type of a base, an expectation, you know you're at least getting X. You could get more based on performance if that's how, you know, your compensation plan works at a business type of thing but you know as an entrepreneur on your own it's like you don't get paid for time you get paid for results so there, there's sometimes there's no idea when like I don't know where my next clients coming from I have a few people that I'm connecting with that seem interested that the seeming the timing might be right that I'm kind of qualifying them and seeing kind of where they are and how serious they are but there's no guarantee they're gonna hire me and work with me and or how long they're gonna work with me for um, so creating that financial uh, plan and, and what I like to say also is a financial buffer, uh, meaning having some a cash reserve um, where, you know, if, if you're responsible for, let's just say, $5,000 a month in expenses and your business brought in $3,000, well, I need to pull from this financial buffer, these $2,000 to, to match that. I don't want to be using credit cards. I don't want to be going into debt that way. Um, I, I have a, I've had a line of credit a business line of credit since, gosh, since 2008. And, and I've, I've drawn out and paid back, I'd have to look at what the number is, but you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of the last, whatever, eight years on that. Um, and that's just because some months it's like I earn more, some months I earn less. And, and if I didn't have that, I would be freaking out. And so having that financial plan, having that financial buffer in place whether it's a line of credit, whether it's cash reserve, a combination of both. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of different strategies, but either way, that's a very important piece uh, because with our business, the most important thing is you can't come from a place of need. You can't need someone to hire you. You can't need someone to buy a product or a service. It's a very bad place to come from because you alter the way you'd normally work with them. And that's when you start to become more, more pressured. You, you start to miss out on things. You're, you're not in the moment. Um, if I'm working with a client and I need them to hire me, it's, it's not going to work. But when you come from that place, you just sit back and it's a much more authentic, relaxed place to come from uh, when you're you know, launching your business. And even when you're in your business, 
um, the biggest thing that I want to teach you is, is it's not just, hey, how can you create, you know, some money right away or, or good money right away or over, you know, over time. It's like you've got to create a, a sustainable income and the st sustainable income is created through the skill sets that you learn. That's why I love teaching the selling skill set and the mindset behind it and the why behind it because that, that skill set is going to get you through, you know, um, whatever my income has been over the years, um, whether I'm, a month is a good month or income wise or maybe not so great in terms of volume wise, um, or when things get tight with things, I have always gone back to my skill sets and what I've, what I've learned over the years. And that's why, I want to, that's why I'm teaching this stuff because I can always go back to the fundamentals of what's gotten me through no matter what. And those are the things um, that will always get you through. And that's where my experience comes in that I share with you. So that financial buffer, that financial plan is an important piece. Sticking with that, a mistake you could make is not really uh, understanding taxes that you, that you make, that you need uh, to save for when you're creating income as an entrepreneur, um, deductions as a business. And I'm not going to go into that stuff. I always advise right out of the gate with my mentoring clients. I say, hey, if you haven't you know, worked with a CPA before, certified public accountant, Definitely find one, get one, sit down and talk with them. You need to find out, you know, what you can deduct, you know, legally in your state. It's different, somewhat different for different states, but um, find that stuff out. You need, you need to understand, like, deductions are awesome in a business. Um, you need to have those. And, and the great part about a, a coaching business is that we don't have a, a lot of overhead. You know, we, we can get away with, in some cases, if, um, if you're not doing paid marketing, you can get away with a couple hundred dollars a month of overhead, you know, if, assuming you're working from home, um, because some of the overhead is just like internet costs, phone costs, stuff that you're probably already incurring just because everyone has that stuff. So, but you want to really understand, you know, where you can deduct things um, so you can, you know, keep more of the money that you make. And then also from a tax perspective in terms of understanding what you'll owe, uh, because, the, you know, when you're getting paid cash, in other words, whether it's through credit card or check or cash, however you're getting paid, um, you need to understand that you're going to owe money <laughs> come tax season. And the worst thing to happen is, is get hit with, you know, a multi-thousand dollar bill tax season and being like, oh, I don't have that, you know. And then having, the worst thing to do is having to pull that from a line of credit or a credit card or um, your cash reserve. That should be saved for just, you know, ebbs and flows in terms of what you're earning each and every month. But, you know, you want to understand, you know, if I earn, let's say, $1,000, you know, what percentage of that should I just be putting aside like I never earned it? So if I take 30% of that and just put it aside, let's say $300, you know, again, that's going to start to cover my taxes at the end of the year. Um, and then come the end of the year, maybe I've got five grand, whatever, saved up for my taxes. And then without deductions and things like that, hopefully I can do better than that. But worst case, I've got my money saved for my taxes. And I don't have to freak out about it. I've had those years, uh, you know, especially the years that I did better than I had anticipated. And um, you can pay a lot of money in taxes. And taxes aren't a bad thing. You know, taxes pay for the paved roads and all that good stuff. But um, when you get hit with a pretty big bill, it's unexpected. So that's, that could put you out of business. I mean, that literally could put you out of business. So, you know, do you due diligence with that? It doesn't take much. It's just a basic understanding. But do it early on. Uh, let's go into a few more mistakes. Um, when I, I, I just jotted them all down here. So another one I'll, I'll go into is back on the social media platforms is um, when I said that as opposed to miss, starting there versus a website is a, a mistake you can make is, is picking too many social platforms to be involved in or you trying to utilize too many social platforms. I mean, there's so much out there with that. Uh, what I recommend and always talk about is, is pick one. <laughs> Keep it simple, stay focused, pick one. Again, it's, it, it's going to be driven by, you know, who am I helping and what am I helping with them sp specifically. And, and based on that demographic in terms of, you know, their age, gender, so forth and so on, what social platform would they tend to hang out and utilize the most? If it's multiple platforms, you know, which one might be most appropriate for what I'm, you know, marketing to them or want to get them in front of them with. And so that's where it's going to drive what social platform you use, you know. So if it's Facebook, great, use Facebook. If it's LinkedIn, use LinkedIn. But stick with that. 
it's going to be very tempting to do uh, different ones, but really get it down and just blow it up. Understand it and blow it up. You know, post on it, do some ads on it if it's applicable for that platform, and it just really show your presence. Um, a lot of people, you know, just like a niche, right? A lot of people like they're so afraid to niche down because they're they feel like they're leaving people out. I'm gonna miss out on business. And it's like, well, it's just the opposite. You're missing out on business by not niching down and being too broad in general. You're watering your message down so it's vague and it, it lacks in value. It's, la it's not grabbing anybody because it's not speaking to anybody. It's speaking to everybody. And so the same thing goes in terms of here with, with um, the social platforms is, you know, stay focused and get your, get your vis you got to be visible. And that's a big piece of social media is a lot of people don't realize it's, it's not just about, you know, people consuming it, but it's, it's just they need to see your face. You know, just start doing some videos, start doing some posts with pictures of yourself with, you know, if you have a business name or whatever, or just picture yourself with your name. You know what I mean? So people start to see that facial recognition is huge. Um, I would, I ran and I still run um, Facebook like ads and then I, um, I do a free offer ad on Facebook and I've been doing that for the past, what has it gotten, almost seven, sorry, 12, sorry, sorry, it's about 10 months for that right now. And, and, and I know initially a lot of that, there's a phase where people just need to see your face. They just need to see like who you are and, and, and now they start to become familiar with you even if they're just scrolling and they see it you know, they start to see it and they see it and see it and then they start to recognize it and then there's that one, you know, title that you have that kind of stands out to them that captures their attention on that day and all of a sudden they, they read it, they listen to it, they watch it, they click over, they join and so forth and so on. So that's a big thing. But if you're, if you're everywhere, you know, on different platforms, uh, I'm not saying it, it can't work, just from a focus on your end business-wise, it's going to be really hard uh, to really know what you're doing on a daily basis. So I always like to work with my clients and saying, let's come up with a social media plan and work it into what we do for marketing each day um, so you know what to do. Because the worst thing is, is, is not having a focus. And that will lead me to the next thing to avoid is not having a focus, not having a niche. Uh, um, and I'll clarify this to say, um, if you don't have a niche, meaning you don't know who you're helping with what specifically, it does not mean you can't be successful. So in other words, you can be successful without having a niche. You know, when I started off uh, back in 2004, I didn't have a niche. I was JSL coaching and God knows, I didn't even really know who I was going after or what I was going after. I was just passionate and I was personal development. And, and the niche was more of like myself and my own energy and, and who I represented. And as people got to know me or from the circles that I had been in, you know, I had clients as a personal trainer and just people I knew within my networks. And so people just listened to me and then the word spread and I just started networking with people and I would start speaking and it was, I was just fired up to be in front of people. And that's kind of how it all started unrolling. So I didn't have a niche starting off. And, and honestly, really until I focused on, you know, helping coaches transition to a full-time business, I, I never really had a, a very well-defined niche. Um, I, as, I, I guess my niche kind of came, came to me more through the evolution of my work as I worked with different companies and fitness companies, um, with Nike, with, uh, with some real estate. I did a lot of stuff with real estate people and I just kind of fell into it by accident and speaking and next thing you know, I got invited to speak at different places um, and then doing stuff with insurance, with State Farm Insurance. So my kind of, whatever I was doing with personal development, it was kind of catered towards more realtors that for a while towards State Farm Insurance for a while, you know, so it, I kind of had a niche by default. So I'm not saying like, oh, if you don't have a niche, don't even bother. By no means is that my message. However, um, I would, and this is what I always do with my mentoring clients, is like after we get through some of the plans and stuff like that and defining, you know, what they want their business to look like, et cetera, is I'm like, all right, let's talk about, you know, your message and who you're helping with what specifically Let's at least take, make a valiant effort in really trying to figure that out. And, and the big piece of that is, is and again, I won't go into super detail because I, I talked about it on last week's call, um, but you know, it just makes your focus so much easier in terms of content, in terms of where you find these people, what you're saying to these people. You know, people on this call are coaches. They're coaches who have an aspiration or some, some want 
to do it on a more full-time basis, you know? And then, so we're all in the same category. So what I talk about and what I reference, it's much more applicable and it's much more valuable because I'm speaking to you. You know, could I do a call like this for network marketers? Could I do it for fitness professionals, for personal trainers? You know, could I do it for realtors? Absolutely, right? And, and th let's say they were all on the call. It still could be beneficial for them, but what makes it more valuable is when I say, hey, I'm doing it for these people. I'm doing it for these realtors. I'm doing it for State Farm Insurance. I'm doing it for coaches. And, and that, that brings the message directly to them and it hits home with them. And they're like, okay, this person, this guy, this girl can help me because they can understand where I'm, what I'm going through, so forth and so on. And that's really where that value is. So really take the time. If you haven't already, I, like I, re I recommend, go to my sellingcoaching.com under the university, type in niche, and, and there'll probably be three or four calls that can pop up. Start there. You know, email me. Talk to me a little bit. And, um, and let's get that figured out. That's a big piece you know, to moving you forward. Uh, Another piece is that you, they focus too much on uh, the coaching skill set. So in other words, your success as a coach in your business is going to be from you understanding entrepreneurship. It's going to be from understanding sales. It's understanding marketing. And, and some of those words, I remember when I would hear those, even like marketing, like, you know, and selling, I remember years back and I'm like, oh. It's such a big word. It's such an overwhelming word. Like, oh, marketing. Like I used to think that's just like, it's such a, I'm not a marketer. I'm not, I'm not a salesperson. Like I'm not, you know what I mean? I didn't identify myself with any of those things and they just were so overwhelming to me. It's such a mystical wor word. And, um, but I realized very quickly, I'm like, well, if I want to be in business, you know, I don't have a marketing team. Right? I don't have a, a sales team. I have me, you know, I've, I worked with and have worked with virtual assistants and so on and so on, but I, I created the decision very early on in my business that I'm going to be a solopreneur. I've worked with a lot of different uh, companies through coaching and then also in the fitness industry and, and I knew I didn't want any employees. I don't want any employees. I can have some people that do projects for me, virtual assistants here and there on different things, but I don't want employees and, I, and I, I'm, I'm great with that and that's, that's by design my business model. Um, but so I don't, we don't have those people and starting off, you're not going to have a sales team. You're not going to have a marketing team. So you are everything. And so, you know, starting to understand the, the basics of it and the fundamentals of it, it, when you start to really start to understand it a little bit more, it's not as overwhelming. And you realize like, okay, there's just a few simple things I can do on a weekly basis. And I, when I do the same things repetitively over time, it's not a sexy thing. It's not something new and creative. It's doing it repetitively. You know, how many Tuesdays do I have a, a Tuesday call? Every Tuesday, right? And how many, how many times on a Monday, if you're on my email list, do you get an email that gives some information and then at the end talks about the Tuesday call? Every Monday, right? How many reminder emails on Tuesday at 10 a.m. do you get? Again, if you're on my email list or my private Facebook group, that, you know, the call is at 12 p.m. Eastern on a Tuesday. Every Tuesday, right? So it's what I do. And so it's what you do. That's, that's the marketing of it. And so it's understanding those things. And a lot of coaches, and rightly so, initially they're like, oh, I want, I want to become a better coach because they love coaching. And great, I'm not saying don't become a better coach. Don't just put those books down or, or things like that. However, you could be the greatest coach in the world, but if no one's hiring you for it, it, it really doesn't matter because you're not helping anybody. Um, and by definition, a business is not a hobby. It's something that you exchange value for, meaning someone's paying for those services. And so you want, and, and it, I'll tell you, coaching is way much better when someone pays you for it than when it's for free. Uh, because mostly, not just because you're earning income, but mostly because there's this inherent like contract, there's this inherent trust, there's this inherent commitment that both of you now have. See, I'm even more committed when someone pays me and so isn't, isn't the client and it just brings it to another whole level. It's amazing what it can do. Uh, and so that's, that's a really big piece of starting to understand, um, starting to focus more on the, the business skill sets of entrepreneurship, the things that I'm talking about, right? It's the things that I'm looking to teach you, even some of the things on the call, right? Creating a financial plan, your taxes, you know, things like that. Like that's the business end of thing. You know, I hate 
like figuring out taxes and, and my expenses and I didn't want to do any of that stuff. In my first few years, I was horrible at it. Uh, but I realized very quickly, especially when I started earning more money, I need to figure this stuff out or I'm going to screw myself and I'm, I could put myself out of business. Um, that's the last thing you want to do after working as hard as you are and will you know, to get your business off the ground. So these are the business things that you want to really start to focus on. Um, again, they're, they're easy when you start to learn them, but it's just getting in a routine of doing them once you understand them. So that's one piece right there. Um, another thing I'll, I'll focus on here in terms of a mistake is um, I'll focus on money piece as well, especially as you start to earn more income. I, I would always recommend, and this is from experience here, is I'd recommend, especially when you're earning more money, um, treat it as if you weren't earning as much money. You know, always have a cap for yourself. So if you need, let's say, $50,000 a year or $75,000 a year to live, and you're starting to earn that now through your coaching business, right? And now all of a sudden you start earning more than that, whatever more, I don't care what it is, whether it's a lot more or a little more. Always live off of a certain base, meaning if I'm earning 100 grand a year and I need 75 grand to kind of live, meaning not, not do anything and have fun, right? I'm not saying that, but if like I've always lived off of, let's say $75,000 and now I'm earning $100,000, don't up your lifestyle to a $100,000 lifestyle. Doesn't mean you can never do that. I'm saying wait. I'm telling you wait. Um, because I had a place where I was earning a lot more money and my lifestyle changed accordingly. And I still saved money, but there was a place where my income changed a little bit and it went back down a little bit. It was still much more than I was earning before, but I was accustomed to more. And then I was putting, I, I actually put a lot of it into my business. I did more, a different website, I, you know, I published a book, and all those things greatly definitely helped my business. Um, but the difference is, is I was, I was looking at things differently because I was earning more money and I wasn't afraid to spend more money because I had it. And looking back on it, and this is what I, I do now, is I live off a certain amount of money. And even if I'm making a whole lot more than that, again, I just create a bigger cash reserve. I create a bigger financial buffer. I save a certain amount of money and then I have a discretionary fund where that's what I use. And if that money's gone, that's what I use. And I always cap it at that. And it's creating that type of a discipline uh, because then if things start to get lean for whatever reason, meaning maybe you need some time off because you're just tired, you need a break, or some, you, you need something that's going on with your health, or you need to take care of a family member, and you're working less, and maybe that's equated to you um, earning less income, um, as long as you're earning that, you know, that base, you can work with that. And then, you, and then you're, you don't have to worry, you don't have to stress. And it all goes back to the security and the soundness of your business long term. Um, you need that security of peace of mind more than anything, again, so that you can't be on the phone with a potential client needing them to hire you. Right? You cannot be in that place. So it, that can't matter. So I always like to say, you know, if you're earning large, live lean. You know, live, live like it's the depression. Live like the market's crashing. Um, because when it's not, it's always good. And if it is, you're not worried. Um, it's focusing on your economy. You know, that's the economic piece of it. And so it's a very simple concept, but it's, it can be very beneficial long term, especially for the longevity of your business. Um, and last thing I'll, I'll focus on here, very valuable piece right here, and then I'll just open it up for questions and comments, um, would be is who are you following? You know, in terms of, let's say, the emails you're getting, social media, you know, we're all bombarded with information on a daily basis and especially when it comes to business you know what I find is that um, entrepreneurs as they they let's whether you're going to a coaching school whether you're just starting off and you just want to become a coach you don't necessarily need a formal education but they start to piece together a whole bunch of information right and again it's not a bad bad thing to do meaning it's like okay I, I listen to Jeff let's say and then I listen to this other guy and listen to this other girl and I get emails from this person and this person and hopefully there's congruency with things but a lot of times a lot of different business coaches and mentors etc they've all had their own experiences and they all do things slightly differently they all have their own different opinions the fun the foundation and the fundamentals are, are still fundamentally the same but what I find is is that um, a lot of the people that um, 
let's say entrepreneurs in general and coaches especially follow uh, a lot of the bigger names out there that are, are widely known, whether they're coaches or not, the things that they're teaching, while they work and they're good, they're teaching these things that they're using and they're using them because their business is at a level where they need to use them. You know, um, and, you know lead magnets, um, creating free offers and putting people through funnel systems and automated automated email systems with autoresponders you know, to take them through a process of videos or whatever it is to lead them to a back-end product and they have upsells and downsells and there's all this stuff on the back end and, and it's, I'm not saying that stuff's not good but the thing is, is you know, they aren't working with people one-on-one -on -one anymore right? for the most part. Right? They might be doing large events or large groups, etc. Um, or they might have a staff now that works with them but they're they're not doing that stuff anymore. They're, they're automated because they have such a large database. They have a lot of, they have a big audience that they're serving. So they're using a lot more automation to service that because otherwise they can't do it. You know, when we're starting off, we don't have anybody. No one's following us. No one likes us. <laughs> I say that, you know, with respect, right? We're just, there's no one on our email list. There's some friends, there's some family or whatever, right? So, you know, using those strategies isn't going to work for you. I mean, I'm not saying it can't work for you, but what I, where I'm going with this is, is I'm foc I, I want you to focus on like the brick and mortar like fundamentals of building a business is one person at a time, interacting with them, getting on calls with them. You know, if, if you're on social media platforms, it's like when someone joins your group or likes your page or messages you or comments on something, it's like take the time to find them and write them a message and engage with them. Um, call somebody up on the phone. I can't tell you how many people like don't ever use the phone um, when it's it's appropriate, or, you know, just to connect with somebody. I can't tell you how many people I've called. They they were my clients. They and I or I barely even knew them. And we'd go be going back and forth, and they might say something, and and I would just be like, just looking online like to to find a website or a social media to see if I found their number, and I would just call them up and and like while we're messaging. And they'd be like, Jeff? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, do you have a minute? They're like, yeah. And then it's just like, it's the greatest thing in the world. And you, you can have a, you know, a lifetime of messaging in a, in a five minute phone call and you can connect so much better. And it's like, and it's, you give them some advice or you coach them through a quick thing. And it's like, they become loyal people. I'm not trying to sell them anything or like, hey, join my program, you know, type of thing. It's more of just like, well, I just, we were going back and forth and I saw this and I just felt compelled to call you. And it's like those things, like that's how I want you to start building your business. You're building your business, which is your audience, you know, and, and you want to have loyal people. You know, I want to start here and, you know, I have people that call into the Tuesday call and it might not be every week, but, you know, they, they ask for the recordings, they, they email me, they message me, um, they, they call into different things. There's people that are in the group that are participating, uh, you know, and, and I get to know them on a more personal level, on a business level, where they are in their businesses. And, and so people know that you care and they start to feel that you care. And now they become more loyal because you're, you're not a friend per se, but they consider you more of a friend. They, can, they trust you. So now when the time comes, it's, it's not only so that when the time comes, they hire you. But again, that's a big aspect of what you're doing is, is people are going to hire you when they trust you and they know you and, and they respect you and they, and they want to follow you. That's when you have their attention. You've got to get people's attention. And right away, you build that one person at a time. That's really what it is, is one person at a time. And that's why it's some people, it sounds slow. Um, it could be two at a time. It could be 10 at a time sometimes, right? Um, but the point being is, is that, you know, take your time and get to know these people and, and get away from like the automation and, and all these funnels and, and, and just automatic stuff and start being personable and make a video, things like that, you know. Um, that's the way you're gonna, people are going to start to get to know you. Oftentimes, though, Interestingly enough, that's, that's oftentimes the hardest thing for us to do as coaches, especially early on, because you know what? Our, we don't believe in ourselves as much. We're, we're worried, you know, who's going to hire me? Who's going who's gonna to hire me? Who's going to want to listen to what I have to say? Or I don't have anything to say. Or, I don't know what to say. You know, there's a lot of those limiting beliefs. There's a lot of those doubts and fears we have inside of us. And honestly, you know what? I could sit and coach you all day on that stuff. But the thing I learn again is... is the worst thing that can happen is, is trying to coach yourself around it or have someone coach you around it uh, because at the end of the day, I find you're still back in that same spot and the best way to get through it is just 
just start creating a video and just suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just get it out there because odds are no one's watching anyways. You know, um, one of my clients I spoke with, I think it was yesterday, you know, she was really struggling with, oh yeah, she's in my, my group program. And she's like, she was really struggling with getting her message out there to start attracting uh, for a program that she's offering. And, you know, especially making videos, she's just so self-conscious. And she went to a YouTube channel that's been around for a long time. And she scrolled down and down and down and down to like some of the first videos that they did, you know, many years ago. And she, she looked at those videos. She's like, oh my God, they were horrible. Like they just, they weren't shot well. They didn't speak well. It was just like, it was horrible. And then you scroll up and now all of a sudden you see this real well-polished, professional done, high, you know, higher budget production, blah, blah, blah. And you, you know, you think like, wow, I can never do that. And you're right. You can't do that right away. But can you do, you know, can you scroll down and could you do that? Could you start somewhere and just start sucking and then suck less every time you do it? <laughs> you know, um, that's what I tell people to do is, is like, so what? That's why in my private Facebook group, I'm like, you know, check out the visibility challenge or just screw it. Just make a video, write a blog post and just put it in there. It's a safe environment and start seeing what it feels like. Get a few comments. Um, that's how you start to get yourselves out there. Um, but again, that, the last piece that I'll give you there is, is you know, get away from a lot of the emails. I'm not saying you need to unsubscribe everything, but you know, find the one or two people that were, are the most relevant for where you are in your business. You know, even myself, if I'm not talking about stuff that's relevant for you, you know, don't follow me anymore. I, and I, I'm guessing you wouldn't be here if, if it wasn't relevant for you, if it wasn't interesting to you, you know, but um, whatever the case is, is find the one or two people that are really resonating with you right now listen to what they have to say, follow what they say, follow through with it. Um, because that's, that's what I found has worked for me is, is when I found, you know, especially my first mentor, you know, when he said, do this, and I started kind of blending in my own ideas. He's like, listen, dude, you can do what you want, but he's like, this is what's worked. And he's like, I recommend this is exactly what you do. And he shaped me up and I just did it and it worked. Um, and that's what I recommend that you start looking at is, is you know, narrowing your focus, getting rid of all a lot of the messages that are irrelevant or that are confusing you and focus on one or two things or ideas that are people that are helping you move forward. That's the biggest thing because uh, as an entrepreneur, we're, you know, we, we are never short on ideas, right? <laughs> and every idea is fantastic, <laughs> but we can't follow through with all those ideas and, and nor are all of them, if, if even many or any of them, even worthy of following through on, but those things distract us. And then even when we do get an idea or hear something that we move forward with, it's not too long and sometimes even minutes before, you know, something's in our inbox that next thing you know, we're researching and looking into and then doubting or questioning the other path we started going into. And now we're paralyzed and next thing you know, we're depressed, we're overeating. And next thing you know, we're just doing nothing. <laughs> so I'm not trying to paint a bleak picture, but this is what happens, isn't it? And so uh, when you focus on some of the things that I was sharing today, um, that's when you, you really start to get some traction. And again, that's where that longevity comes in. It's a day at a time. It's understanding, you know, what's my path, uh, educating your expectations. And, and that's when you start to gain some traction. And those of you that follow me consistently or, or that will, you know, like even just yesterday in the group, we just passed 600 people um, in, in the Selling Coaching private Facebook group. And, um, you know, anytime we hit, you know, a hundred number or something like that, or even my likes on my Facebook page, you know, I'm posting that stuff. I'm like, hey, we hit 600 people, you know, and it's like those are the small successes along the way because I remember starting off and there was, you know, five people and 10 people and I was looking at all these other people and I'm like, wow, they've got a thousand. Wow, they've got 20,000. You know, I'm like, I have a hundred or like, you know what I mean? But it's just like, next thing you know, I'm going to wake up and there'll be a thousand people in the group and I'll wake up again and there'll be 1,500 people. And, and maybe it's months from now, maybe it's years from now, who cares? It's a person at a time, and each person that comes and each person that I want to interact with and engage with, and I want to get to know a little bit, um, because I want to be a part of their process and their success. And I know you do too, and that's why I want to teach you, you know, these methods. Um, you know, these aren't the sexy methods. These aren't the saleable methods that people are marketing out there, are they? This is, this is the brick and mortar grind stuff behind the scenes. Um, and when I mentor with you, I go into a lot more behind the scenes of stuff you can do, and, and a lot of it is just, it's on the phone, it's getting, it's connecting with people one by one and spending some time in people, whether they end up hiring you or not, it's not the point. It's getting to know people um, and, 
and networking and connecting yourself um, and helping people and it, and it comes back when the timing's right. It just does. It's just being able to recognize it because you're working on the selling skill sets that I teach you.